James David Hill, an emergency, any chance of play? Uh, probably not, unless something happens to one of our other players today at training or, or overnight. Um, yeah, David just needs a bit of time to get his body right, I think. Um, he's obviously a very important player for us, but he's just had a, an interrupted pre-season and then played one game and, and missed two. So we want to be cautious with him, and we've got a, you know, another Ruckman in very good form as well, and Tom Bell Chambers, who's playing some really good football. And I think your backy guys are in form. So he could have played really, but it's just taking a really conservative approach with really. him? Well, he'll play in the reserves. He'll probably play about 75% of the game. So he, um, you're not really afforded that luxury in AFL footy where you can bring guys on and off when you want to. So effectively, David's sort of just going back a step and playing a pre-season game to get himself ready for the rest of the season. And the, the reasons behind leaving Alan Dadier? Uh, it's not really Alan's fault. I mean, Alan was, um, was, sub this, was sub last week and... We felt with Nathan Lovett Murray when he sub two, two weeks in a row, probably didn't help him early in the game against St Kilda when he played his first um, full game. So we just thought it'd be more benefit for Alwyn to go back and play a full game in the reserves. And um, Brent Prismal has deserved his game. I mean, he's had a terrific pre-season, played three really good games in the reserves, and it, it probably was a flip of a flip of a dot, flip of the coin. Um, and you know, Pris deserves his place. So nothing to do with Alwyn, but probably just better for Brent that he gets a game after playing well in the reserves. Does the decision on Hill send a message to everyone that form is the only thing that matters rather than reference matters? Uh, yeah, not, not necessarily. Uh, form is obviously the most important thing. You have to be playing well. But if David was in, was fit and had played every game and done a full pre-season, then it might be a different matter. But it's more about getting him conditioned for the rest of the year rather than coming in for a game, potentially getting injured, going out for another couple of games. That doesn't help him and it doesn't help us. So... This next little period for David's about getting him right for a, whether it be a 16, 17 week season rather than a 22 week season as a full season for everybody else. Was it a tight call between Brisbane and Reynolds? Uh, oh, very tight. Yeah, it's, it's, a good, it's a good dilemma to have at the moment. Um, you know, we've got Henry Slattery coming back from a broken hand as well, who was very close. Um, Travis Cotter, who's played very well, in the, very well in the reserves, who was close. So there's a number of guys who are up for selection. And um, yeah, Remo. Like Brent has played well in the reserves, but probably with Brent's experience, we thought we'd go with that this week. The last few years, Essendon and Carlton games have traditionally been pretty high scoring games. Do you think that'll be the case again, or given both teams said to improve defensively, it might be a bit more of, a, a bit more of an unrest? Um, it's hard to tell, Julian, hard to tell if, if the game will break open, but you know, their midfield's obviously a very talented midfield, so we're pretty keen to keep the game as, as close and tight as possible. But that's the preference, but you never, you can't be sure that's going to happen. Greater right unidentified the Rucks as key earlier this week to victory. Do you agree? Yeah, the, the Rucks are very important, um, but so is the rest of the ground as well. It, it, it's very important you get your first hand on that tap out, but also once it hits the ground, who gets the ball after that? So obviously they've got some, some good Ruckman in good form who has good height about them, so we need to combat that. But we also think that in Tom Bell Chambers is in good form and Paddy, we've got a, a couple of very good Ruckman as well. You know, you mentioned keeping it tight. That defensive aspect, was that something that you've, you've, you've consciously worked on over the pre-season and you go into? Oh, definitely. Um, you know, it's something we've, that all sides are working on the defensive side of the game. And you look at the best sides in the competition over history and they've been the best defensive side. So it's something that we're working on. We're not, we're not there yet. We probably, um, I think we've got maybe the sixth best defence at the moment in terms of points kicked against us. Um, and we'd like that to be better. So the team's playing very well at the moment. Do you feel you've got a couple more gears to go to, or is this playing pretty sort of <coughs> to your maximum at the moment? I'm not sure, Jules. I'm not sure where our best is or, or what, how we're playing compared to what our maximum is. But I know we've improved from uh, what, what we started out doing. And you look at you know even our and our cup form, which was not bad, but I think our game's gone up since then. So I would hope that we keep improving. That's the plan that we keep improving as the year goes on. But you don't, you don't know. I mean, we don't know this group very well. We've been with them six months and we're very pleased with the way they're playing at the moment, but it, um, things change pretty quickly. So we'll, we're trying to push for continued improvement and hopefully that's what will come over the next um, sort of four months of the, of the season. Do you have someone set to play Chris Judd last year? Was Frank uh, we, look, I suppose uh, Heath Hocking would be the favourite to play on, on, um, on Chris. He's, he's done some good jobs so far this year, but... It also depends what they do as well um, in terms of where they position their players. And, and you know, I, I don't think nowadays necessarily you go a really hard tag on players. You, you want your own players to win the ball as well. And, and that's what we'll be encouraging 
whoever plays on, on Chris to do is to win his own ball. In the same time, trying to stop you know, one of the best players in the competition and who has been that way for the last six, seven years. And, um, he's, a, he's a critical player for them who, who is in excellent form. What are your memories of Carl Leston games as a player? Uh, there's good memories and there's some lots of bad memories. Um, they're, they're big games. They're, uh, they're games where a lot of people come and watch. Um, but I think the, the emotion that was maybe back there in the late 90s, early 2000s is, is not quite there as it, as it used to be. And that's probably a good thing for both sides that they can get out and play and, and, and play for the four points that's there. But there's no doubt that when you go out and play at the MCG in front of whether it be 70, 80, however many thousand people, it's a, um, it has a great atmosphere. And that's, that's your memories of Carlton Nestling games. And, and the passion that the supporters have for, for, uh, for beating each other's teams is great for football. Do you think Carlton Test is the biggest role because there's still people involved in both clubs that played in that, that era you mentioned before? Sounds silly, Jules, but whoever we play next week is our, our biggest rival. And, um, you know, we've, we've had big games so far this year in terms of the importance of winning them. And Carlton's no different, the importance of winning this game and, and giving it our chance to keep improving is, is really whether they're a rival or not is more important. Is there an extra dimension, though, James, given what you said about backing up big wins? Win the following week, this year. It's not an extra dimension, but if you want to be a good team, you can't win one, lose one, win one, lose one. That doesn't that gets you gets you nowhere. So I think there's no secret that we need to put consecutive wins together, and it just so happens that it's Carlton this week.